Okay, let's just get into it because I can't start this video any other way. <laughs> um, my name is Melissa and the other day I asked on Instagram what my next video should be about, um, this one that I'm currently recording, and I had a few people suggest doing an old sketchbook tour to see my progression, to see the progression in my artwork. Um, the other suggestion that I got that I think I will tackle in a separate video is an upcoming project or idea. Um, that's a whole other thing that I think I need to think about. There's an idea, but <laughs> we'll get to that um, another time. So what I thought we would do in this video is I have a number of sketchbooks here and a few of my recent paintings that I'm particularly happy with. Um, but let's start <laughs> uh, somewhere close to the beginning. So before I started putting pen to paper, um, I was doing digi digital art, art digitally on my, um, on my iPad using Procreate. I did a hundred day challenge where I made an animation a day. And this was before Procreate added any animation tools um, to their app. So <laughs> uh, it would be a lot easier if I was doing that now, but I am not. So let's start here <laughs> with uh, this like, uh, oh my God, Sesame Street, MF Doom. So MF Doom is a rapper, a uh, hip hop artist who passed away. I want to say too soon. <laughs> I don't remember the date. I drew this on January the 9th, 2021, though when I got my first Posca markers. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, the, he's, he's Miami Doom. And uh, these are just me doodling, trying to figure out how to use Posca markers a little bit. You'll see more of a progression with Posca. These are just copies. I think that's a copy from a mug, a Starbucks mug from Tokyo, Starbucks mug from Paris. One of my cousin's photos. I don't know, something. <laughs> I'm just going to zoom through. This is the first um, Posca piece. This is um, my dog, Simon, <laughs> um, based on my photo favorite photograph that I've ever taken of him. Um, yeah, my first piece to be proud of using Posca markers. So I've done a few pet portraits in that style. And then I got some gouache, um, the Hemi gouache set that everybody starts out using. <laughs> um, yeah, this is also Posca. Some dirty dancey, dirty, <laughs> dirty dancing movie stills. Um, those were, those were fun. Um, some messy gouache play. Just doodles. Uh, this is something my friend Jason drew that got a little bleed through from the backside. He is a fantastic artist, by the way. Oh, this was from our art hang party where we were doing birds. <laughs> uh, swatching out, swatching out some gouache. It's going to be loud in the background. And I got some acrylic, no, alcohol markers. And then I think the rest is just like my nieces um, playing in here. So we'll, uh, we'll skip past here. But one day they will be, I mean, they already are artists in their own right. Um, yeah, so that is sketchbook numero uno. Uh, this is next. So this was started on March the 5th, 2021. So continuing with movie studies, um, Posca marker, Kill Bill, fun, fun. Uh, this was a Stranger Things poster that I saw online using Posca marker. This is a uh, Studio Ghibli still study. Um, this is also when I got my gouache. Um, so this is just me playing. This is supposed to be a self-portrait, but it <laughs> looks nothing like me. Um, Posca marker, playing with gouache. Uh, this is in the style of Tink Illustration, and this is in the style of Sophie McPike. Um, and then here I just did a really loose gouache background and then used a, used a, was it a, no, it was just a fountain pen. Um, yeah, doodles. These were fun. More fun. A hobbit house. <laughs> this is my first landscape 
landscape painting using gouache. It's uh, again our dog Simon in uh, Tobamori. So if I were to paint this today, and maybe I should, <laughs> um, it would be different. But I mean, hey, first time, right? We're looking at progress. We're looking at progress. Just a field of tulips using Posca markers. Fish. This was gouache. Gouache. So I had a pretty short-lived obsession with folk art, and it's still something that I really want to explore. Um, my background is Mennonite, and the artwork that my Mennonite sisters, aunts, um, those who came before me, it just it, it blows my mind, and I, I love it. Uh, I think this is Posca. This is Posca. This was a still life um, prompt from Sophie McPike's Patreon that she put together. That was very nice. These are Posca studies of Hiroshi Nagai. He's a Japanese artist that is just amazing. Amazing. And I've learned a lot actually copying, um, copying his style, studying his style. <laughs> um, I was, I was making art every day and I still continue I would say most days. So we're celebrating. Yesterday we celebrated the second anniversary of starting my 100 days of gouache fun challenge. Um, me and my friend Susie decided, well, I asked her if she wanted to, to join me because I really wanted to learn how to paint um, using gouache. So this is the beginning. I think this is really the beginning of my journey. Um, so we made a prompt list of 100 prompts in every day. Um, we, I, she gave up after the puppy prompt day, <laughs> which we'll get to. Um, yeah, uh, and just every day I would sit down and paint. So day one was grocery list. So there we go. Day two, day three. You can see I'm still working in uh, folk art style and these are all gouache that is another Hiroshi Nagai um, study so that's the Himi gouache set that I am using here for these some days are better than others but again this is my eighth day of using gouache really so give myself some grace <laughs> um, this cake here I remember it was really the first time that I felt like I was actually painting, like trying to get depth, um, you know, shading and everything like that. Again, if I were to paint this today, it would be different. And these citrus slices were pretty fun to do. The mangoes here, I was really happy with the shadows. Um, and you'll see that I kind of worked some shadows in future pieces here, but the colors, the mixing, the everything on this page, I like it. Um, all of these are just based on references that I found uh, I found online. Some more Posca studies of Hiroshi Nagai. This wave was really intimidating, but once I broke it down um, and did it, it really it really came together. This um, these two paintings here again, I felt like I took a step forward. Um, the shadow got a little bit out of control, but <laughs> I really like how I like rendered the true cover of my Joy of Cooking cookbook. Um, it is a well-loved book and one that I've been cooking from for probably 15, 20 years. And so she's the beat up. <laughs> um, and I got that. And this is my first love, my my one and only um, Bulldog Dexter. <laughs> that's, that's my boy. Um, still really super proud. And I don't know that I could paint this any better today than I did back on May 2nd, 2021. So we're now, what are we, April 21st, 2023. So two years ago, I don't, I don't think I could do this better. <laughs> um, I love this. I should pull this out of my sketchbook and frame it and put it up on the wall. This is my second landscape painting. That's a big disaster. <laughs> uh, again, if I were, does it go that way or that way? Who knows? This way, I think. Um, I would do this painting much more justice today, <laughs> but progress, right? We're, we're looking, we're looking at progress. Uh, this is me and, uh, 
a crazy pink shadow self portrait <laughs> uh, with line back her shoulders, but not terrible. I mean, the eyes are too big and there's definitely things wrong with it, but day 16. Look at that. Um, some flowers, a moon and sun. Again, all Google photos. Actually, this my cousin sent me. That was one of her photos. Um, yeah. Patterns. <laughs> uh, I found it really hard to get straight lines, uh, smooth edges. Just a really ugly tiger. Donuts. Again, I think I, I don't know if it's just the shadow that makes the everything look like there's more depth in there, but they, these are really fun to paint. I really like doing those patterns. Again, playing with the shadows. This is a good spread. So day 24, 25. I feel like I'm understanding um, the paint. Going back to the folk art inspiration from the beginning. And that's the end of that sketchbook. Now moving, I think we move into this one. Continuing on with the 100 day challenge. I hate this one. <laughs> I hated it then and I don't like it now. Um, this hat I was really proud of. Again, working more into the shadows, um, more contrast in the piece. Yep. These, this in particular, the light bulb, um, I still, I'm still really happy with that one. Painting light is hard. <laughs> it's really hard. These were really fun too. Um, I think I made reels of painting these too. And uh, yeah, they were fun. Like that pepperoni still looks real to me. I don't know about you, but that looks, that looks real. Day 38. <laughs> Another landscape getting better. Um, getting better. <laughs> Hmm. This Buddha I was really proud of too. I think I like contrast in my paintings, which I'm I'm learning now. <laughs> this is me doing a Bob Ross painting, <laughs> except he works in oils and I was working in gouache, so it's totally different and does not uh, does not work. This duck is fun. Oh boy, another bad landscape painting. <laughs> Here I tried um, adding color pencils over top of the gouache, which I'm much better at doing now, uh, but not then. That horse is so scary. The elephant is good. <laughs> Panda is cute. Some Moomin. And Moomin house. Another landscape. I think I followed a YouTube tutorial for this. Uh, just a center a train from Center Island. These raindrops were really fun. They're very simple. Very simple. Like it's like a, let's see if we can get a close up. It's like a, a circle, so a darker circle. And then you add a little light on the bottom and a little light on the top, like light on the inside and light on top. And it makes a raindrop. <laughs> it's cool. Simon, this one's good too. He was cute. I think the way that I did his tongue here, I think, I think it worked. <laughs> I think we're coming to the end. Um, so we're at, what are we, six, day 69, day 70. The strawberry is nice. Um, I think I was starting to peter out because I, I around this time I ordered myself a watercolor set and so my um, desire to learn to paint with watercolor quickly um, quickly set in. <laughs> These carrots are good. Yeah day 74 that's it so I made it to day 74 of 100 and I ended on a bad note but it continues this is my grandma's garden. I think this is the first time that I painted um, my grandma's garden, which you'll see. You'll see some more of. Uh, so this is in 2022. So this sketchbook sat since 
September. No, May 2021. So <laughs> um, I finally picked it up and just used it to fill it. It's a plain air piece from when we were camping. These ones I did um, in herb, what is it? Urban sketching, explore your world in a new perspective with Le Pain. It's a domestica course. I highly recommend it if you're into urban sketching. Um, his techniques and the way that he, uh, he explains how he works is great. Uh, that's that same picture that we saw earlier. <laughs> not, not good, not great. This one I did outside again, um, just really super loose, obviously playing with acrylic paint I think some gouache faces in the style of Sandy Hester and how she draws her face faces that's the end of that sketchbook do we let's side sidebar not about this one um, so this one I started in July 2021 and this is when I got my watercolor. So you'll see the style of watercolor is very different. Um, and I blew myself away not to toot my own horn with my first <laughs> watercolor painting. I did this one first. Um, and I still think, I still, th I don't, I still don't even know if I could do it this good again. So yeah, I was having uh, having fun with watercolor. These ones, um, these fruits and vegetables, I did back around August 2021. And then just recently, I filled in these two. And pretty happy that I could continue the style. And we have a cat here. I'll just do a quick uh, flip through, but I I like I like this style. I think it suits more urban sketching um, than anything. I think I did this one on location. These ones, yeah. This one I did on location. This one I did on location. These ones I did at home. Gonna flip through. I think that baguette is really nice. <laughs> I have just a couple more. I love this spread. I like that one. That's based on um, a listening bar in Hong Kong that we went to. Tokyo, Hong Kong. I did this one on location too. Uh, this one I actually just did in March um, 2023, trying to fill up I have one one more spread in this sketchbook, and then we can do a proper tour. <laughs> Although that might be enough, I don't know. Uh, so this one is September 6 to uh, 2021 to April 17th, 2022, and this is when I was doing a Meru Godas domestica course, where she. Um, shows how to use how she uses gouache I think I think it was gouache so these are all based on lessons from from her class I did this on location too um, Calendar Bay in uh, northern ish Ontario <laughs> some cute squirrels this is when I had aspirations of doing Inktober that year I was gonna do all squirrels as far as I got. <laughs> Although this spread's pretty cute. I was going to do something here, um, draw over top of that, but no. My cat, Pearly. Yeah. Uh, this is when I joined Rizo Chan's Patreon, and um, these are some of the lessons from that. She doesn't have her Patreon anymore, but it was extremely helpful in learning depth 
and dimension in faces and objects. Uh, this is an oil pastel landscape. That's a very scary uh, Joni Mitchell. <laughs> A little folk art quilty thing. A fun little spread. <laughs> Abandoned page. The rest of the sketchbook I think is just uh, just play. Oh this is when I was getting ready to do plein air painting last year. Um, I wanted to see the difference between landscapes using gouache and watercolor. Um, so these top two are gouache, these bottom two are watercolor. Again, gouache versus watercolor that I abandoned because I was like, well, the gouache is just so much better. So. <laughs> Which is funny because when I started doing plein air painting last summer, I started using gouache and I think I did a couple and then I got a new watercolor set and it was watercolor from there on out pretty much. Yeah, so like I think my landscapes are starting to get better. This is obviously a mixed media piece with color pencil and oil pastel, I think on top. And just to finish off the sketchbook. <laughs> yep, messy, messy. So that's that one. All right, let's, uh, let's talk plain air. I think these are in order, but I'm just gonna flip through them. Um, so these are all the ones that I, not all the ones, some of the ones that I did last year. This one I'm particularly happy with. They look very nice in these mats. <laughs> um, all of these are for sale, by the way, on my Etsy shop, which you can find the link to below. I'm getting very excited for more plein air um, painting. What are we now? August 21st. Um, that one I did on location in Mexico. Same with that one. Um, and the weather is finally, finally, finally starting to get warm. Yeah, those are all Mexico. That's not, that's Tobamori. That was the first one. That was my first um, plein air on these little um, four by six, five by seven cards, whatever they are. <laughs> Yeah, so those are my plein air paintings from last summer. Okay. Do a quick um, flip through of here and see if there's anything of note. You would have seen these recently, I think, in a sketchbook tour. See if we can focus more on the landscapes and stuff than anything, because I think that's what really shows um, my progress. I was really happy with that bagel. <laughs> Both eating it and painting it. Hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> trying to speed speed flip yeah around here around this time so this was October 8th 2022 where I started to do the base layer of gouache and then add color pencil and neo color I think this is just color pencil um, on top to add some extra like depth and dimension and stuff um, is where I started to to feel good. <laughs> it's just some color composition studies. Yes, so the gouache and is 
Or neo color. There might be new neo color on that. Um, yeah. This is when it all started to come together. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Uh, that's oil pastel. You don't need to see the other side of that one. Yeah, I would have had I would have had neo colors by this time, I think. Yeah. Just helps to add texture and dimension. <laughs> I'm still amazed that I was able to get like the wet reflections of light and stuff. You know, sometimes you just surprise yourself. Yeah. This one's a little a little bit messy, I think, but the fall colors in the trees were hard to get. Oh, this is when I got acrylic ink. An abandoned page. <laughs> this one I did watercolor with a little bit of color pencil on top. Oil pastel. <laughs> Skip that. Simon. That was um, gouache with color pencil and neo color too. Handsome boy. Oh, these are looking familiar to me now. <laughs> Just uh, we're in February twenty twenty three. Nitty, my net, my cat knit. Um, this was acrylic ink and color pencil and neo color twos. And coming to the end. <laughs> That's the end of that sketchbook. Um, yes, so now putting all of that experience and play and everything together and we come to what is currently my happy place with painting. <laughs> um, so this is my grandma's garden again, based off that same photo that I keep going back to time and again. Um, this was acrylic ink, color pencil, and neo color twos. And like really pushing like the the contrast of of shadows and well mostly shadows, yeah. Um, this one of the, I think it's the Eldonan Castle in Scotland. Really happy. Um, really happy with this. Good scribbles, good depth, good light. Good. <laughs> uh, this was acrylic ink and color pencil, Neo Color 2s. And then this was me. Um, there's a recent video of a process doing the process of this and this is using gouache and color pencil neo color twos um, but when i look at the colors like between the acrylic ink and the gouache i think i like the colors that i get with the acrylic ink better they're just a little bit dirtier mute muted more desaturated a little bit like even um comparing these two I think I like the colors of, of the acrylic ink um, better. This was also acrylic ink. Um, and this was acrylic ink that I just did. So that's my painting <laughs> uh, journey, my painting journey. Yay. Um, I hope that was entertaining. I hope you found that, uh, I don't know, um, enjoyable to watch. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.